bikes and property, then what you're effectively doing is you are guilty of trespass on private property. You're trespassing, for which the only legal excuse in Roman courts is to admit a mistake. And that's how they do it. That's how they do it. So uh, we go on to explain what licence means. Uh, we effectively say that, that this concept is, is null and void. Uh, it's a perversion, and it is. But I want to explain to you how the licence system emerged and how they make it work so that when you look at dealing with an issue of licence, you understand the legal and perverse, and is perverse, but the legal contortions that make it work. Okay, this is the last um, section I'll cover now before I, I really look forward to your questions and the comments. It's Article 333, Privileged International Government. And I'll wrap up with this. It'll take me about another five to ten minutes, and I'll wrap up, and then I look forward to your questions. Article 333. Privileged International Government, PIG, or PIG, constituted in 1783 in Venice, also known as New World Order, also known as the One World Government and the Illuminati, is a broad network and affiliation of privileged members of societies across the world who have taken a solemn oath, or solemn oaths, to benefit themselves, hence the PIGs, and the privileged elite at the expense of their own people. Now, prior to the formation of privileged international government systems, PIGs, in 1783, the ranks of the privileged elite was reserved, really, for the Venetians, the Magyar, the Gazar families, and a few advisors. However, from 1783, with the promotion of a range of international knighthood fraternities, like the Knights of Malta, the Knights of Columbus, all these different fraternities, and the reconstituted Freemason movement, politicians, judges, academics, artists, philosophers, religious leaders, entrepreneurs, and military leaders were all invited to become pigs or members of the privileged international government. Now, it's 3424. The primary goal of the pig system is, was to create a prison, estate, nation system, pens, of voluntary slaves indebted to the banks and willing to consent to being paupers for minimum reward while the pig members receive greater protection and benefit, ensuring the system functioned. Simply, if we want to talk about their goal, was to create and has succeeded in creating pig pens, the system that was put together in the 1930s and has been in place ever since. Now, Almost every single leading politician, banker, military leader, leading entrepreneur, religious leader, academic artist have been pigs that have ensured the maintenance of the prison, estate, nation system pens since the 1930s through the personal desire for recognition, acquiescence that the system's too large, or just active complicity and cowardice. In the global pig pen, is the single greatest corruption of law in history, perverting the constitutions of countries, instituting laws that mean the government of most Western nations are effectively at war with their own people. Now, I'll wrap up with two more things. I've been asked to just quickly mention the uh, Bank for International Settlement and the money system, which I will at the moment. But the tools by which the pig pen system functions is by private international legislative law or pills, which we've been swallowing for decades. And what they do is they sell it as a high ideal, the Charter of Protection of Rights of Children, the Bill of Rights, the Hague Conventions, the Geneva Conventions, when in fact it's a lock and key system that with national, law, national laws ultimately deprives us of our immutable rights in property. Now, we've made known in the covenant of uh, One Heaven that this system is coming to an end and we're giving notice. 
And you can certainly help by expressing to people your knowledge of what you now know and the fact that we are dealing with pigs. That's exactly what we're dealing with, pigs. Now, uh, the Supreme Financial System and the Bank for International Settlement. I made it a priority to finish these canons and I hope you appreciate the importance of finishing them because it does concern me that so many people are still facing the daily corruption of going to the courts and not seeing the remedy. I'm also aware that the financial system is a major, major issue and August 15th is fast approaching. The presentation that was planned to go to the Bank for International Settlement was originally to present them uh, something of value and then effectively Sorry about that, everyone. Looks like we lost Frank, so he should be right back here in just a moment. Uh, we'll hang in here and wait for Frank to come back. Anybody hearing me? Anybody hearing? Hello? Okay. Yeah, let's see if, uh, all right, see if Frank gets back on here real quick. He should be back on. Anyway, let's uh, go to uh, the reminder for those of you that are on the phone. If you are uh, wanting to get in the question queue, press star 8 on your phone, and that will put you in the queue, and I get to those questions in the order that they're in the queue. You'll see that they're numbered 1, 2, 3, 4 as they come in, uh, and so on. And it looks like those of you that are in the um, chat group are seeing how to put the questions in and doing very well over there. If you'll type in question in all uppercase and then in proper case type your actual question, that helps us spot those questions and we can go through those as we see those as well. So, um, uh, Gerald, if you're on the line, can, if you could send Frank a uh, Skype message or if you see that he's on or just help him realize that we have lost him. That would be great. Normally he's back on by now. I'm not seeing him yet. Um, let me go to, uh, real quick, while we're waiting for Frank to come back, let me go ahead and go to Lynn. Lynn, hang on here. Let's see. Get you unmuted. Lynn, are you there? Uh, hi, Terry. I wanted, hi. To let the, I wanted to let everybody know there's a tip that, that came out of a court situation in the southwest here in the U.S. and a chief judge was removed from office. Um, kind of sounded like the out of the IMF playbook. Uh, he was accused of raping a prostitute and had child pornography on his home computer. So over the weekend a new chief judge had to be appointed and somebody that did some investigating found that that appointment is done by the probate judge of the county. And that kind of goes back to all the stuff we have about, you know, are, are we dead? Are they probating? You know, everything is, is just a, uh, a probate of an estate. So I just wanted to pass that on and, and people around might check into their counties and see what the county duties what the duties are of the probate judge, and that's where you may find that information. And that was an appointment of the judge of the district court. Um, now, I don't know what happens with the magistrate appointments. Okay, that's all I have. Thanks. Well, is Lynn, is that the, yeah. uh, the lower case district court, uh, actual district court, those elected, are they elected or are they are appointed? The probate judge appoints the chief judge of that court. Yes. Okay. And, yeah. So, you know, you'll have the, the court levels will 
be the magistrate court. Then the next court is um, the district court, uh, which I would call it. it's going to have a county name with it, you know, and and not to be confused with what I call the federal court, which is the district court of the district of um, Colorado or Arizona or Tennessee. Right. You know, this, right. This, so the district court is generally the one where most people are running into problems when they have felony charges. Yeah, so, very good. Um, but the very interesting thing to me is I think we've always had a presumption maybe this was coming out of the Attorney General's office or something like that, and when in fact it was found to be under the probate. And uh, if you go back to the information I have on my second birth certificate, that was issued prior to the diversion that I get if I order a certified copy. And it specifically says on that certificate, were the drops placed in the baby's eyes within one hour of birth? If not, when? So they check yes or no. If they check no, they have to write down when the drops were placed in the eye, uh, eyes of the baby. Now, what that means is uh, that's the official moment of declaring that baby dead. So I was declared dead within an hour of my birth by the attending physician who was my grandfather. I'm sure he didn't know that. Wow. That's very yeah. interesting. And Looks that like goes back to what Frank said about it goes yeah. back to the Roman cult tradition when somebody died, they put coins over their eyes and sometimes their mouth so they had a safe journey across the river Styx. And my yeah. husband, a, a veterinarian, and he said, we never put drops in the eyes of animals, you know, that are born. So they're not going to get an infection in the birth kind of mm-hmm. wow. You know, so he's yeah. going, when you start thinking about it, it's ludicrous. Yeah. Amazing. Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah, so there you are. It looks like we've got Frank back, and um, thank you very much, Lynn. That, that's okay, very, yeah. uh, awesome. I don't know if, yeah, I don't know if Frank heard what I said, but uh, in in a place in the southwest here in the States, Frank, um, a chief judge was removed from office on a Friday of a local district court, you know, the county district court. And the allegations were out of the IMF playbook, um, raping a prostitute, any had child pornography on his uh, home computer. Now, they had to appoint a chief judge over the weekend. And by Monday, the name of the chief judge showed up on the website. When they were investigating who appoints the chief judge, they found out that appointment is done by the probate judge right. of the county. So, you know, it's, it's fascinating, and I think there's a number of things that you've raised. So I want to see that we've got reflected in the canons as well. I mean, I think there's some additional information both on the, the procedure of baptism as well as making absolutely clear um, the function of probate in these courts and how that's used as part of the claim. It's great, Lynn. It's great information. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Sorry about that, Terry. That's uh, the usual story sometimes that um, you drop out. Can I, can I, before we get on, can I just answer a couple of questions that came into the chat that I saw um, as I was coming back in about old canons? Do you mind? Uh, that would be fine. Um, I'm not sure if you caught the one about being, uh, about participating in the census, uh, if you caught that one a little bit earlier. But yeah, go ahead and cover some of those questions and then I'll keep track of yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Look, um, there are three there are three uh, questions that that keep coming up, and they may come up as genuine, or they may come up because people might feel that this is uh, a weakness. So the first question is, uh, how do I become a member of One Heaven? Now. Um, I don't begrudge anyone asking that question if they haven't had a chance to read, but once you read the covenant, it makes pretty clear that everyone is considered ipso facto a member of one heaven. And by being a member of one heaven doesn't simply 